What's up, everybody? Another episode of Technology Today. We're going to call this music studio recording unit thing deal. Um, this is where I do all my YouTube videos. It is my music studio. I have got most things on wheels because wheels make things easier. I have a lot of keyboard stands that I put stuff on and using a keyboard stand for my little YouTube demo as well. One of the things I wanted to be able to do is to have my keyboards on wheels. So I've tried a couple different things. First thing I tried was the moving dolly. That worked probably the best out of everything uh, out of the two that I've tried. Not great though because it uh, does raise everything up by about five inches and just makes it just a little bit more unstable. The other thing I tried was these uh, appliance moving caster things and they more scrape the floor than actually roll. These stones I got and they come off easy as you can see. So the goal here would be to get all these keyboard stands on wheels and I got to thinking you know I can print uh, things on the 3D printer at work like camera tripod mount things um cable mount things and other things for like gopro mounts and stuff so my thought is what if i design something to stick on the end of the tube of the keyboard stand to attach a caster wheel to and i did make one attempt to that it looks something like this. Obviously this one has broken because I crammed it on, but essentially that would go on and I've got pictures that'll show of me putting on and uh, do it in a parametric way so I can just change some variables in my design in Fusion 360 and adapt it for each size keyboard stand leg tube thing. So that is what this video is about. I'm Earl Cannonbear for Technology Today's Music Studio Unit. Let's see if I can make it so. So here I am setting up my variables. This is my first crack at the uh, caster wheel adapter for the keyboard stand. Trying to make everything parametric. So I've got one or two dimensions that drive the whole drawing. And uh, it didn't work. I, yeah. Here we see me trying to model a screw, and then I'll later I'll do a bolt. Here we go. And uh, more variables. And uh, it just goes to show that you really need to go into this with uh, a plan in mind of how you're going to do this, and what everything is going to be called, and how you're going to drive everything. Otherwise, you end up spending more time thinking about what you're going to do than you're actually going to spend time doing it. Um, here you can see my confusion on whether or not to drive it from the inside or outside diameter or the thickness of the pipe. And my mistake was using the thickness of the pipe and not the inside and outside diameters there. And trying to figure out what to drive the actual length of the cylinder thing. And uh, yeah, I'm just basically showing you this so you know that uh, you generally don't get this right the first time you try it. So it can be quite a bit of trial and error. So I am going to start completely from scratch with uh, a new updated drawing and some new notes on how I want to do it. And hopefully I can get a, uh, a parametric design. And I'll also put a link in the description in the description below uh, for a couple of videos that I found helpful on parametric design in Fusion 360. So be sure to check those out. And uh, I'll let this go, and then at the end I've got a screen grab of a, uh, a modified version where it's totally and completely wrong. So you can, you know, look at that and go, <laughs> it didn't work at all. So yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a version two of the uh, caster keyboard stand wheel retrofit. I've already created a new project. 
So that is good. I am going to close that. I am going to save this. I am going to call this keyboard stand wheels or retrofit and make sure it goes into the correct location in my project and I am going to hit save. First thing I'm going to do is set up some variables, variables, variables. And to do that, I typically have my variables listed up here, but this is the first time I've used Fusion 360 on this computer. So I am going to add that to my menu. So I am going to go to the modify menu. I'm going to go down to the change parameters. And I am going to add that to my toolbar with this little guy here. Now I can click this and get at my parameters or variables. The first parameter I want to create is the pipe outer diameter, which is going to come in at 25 millimeters. The second is the inter, inter, inner diameter. And that is going to come in at 23. I've measured all these. And um, this is one of those things where I was using the actual thickness of the pipe. Instead, I'm using the inner and the outer diameter to determine the thickness of it. I don't know if that will work out better or not, but we're certainly going to find out. Next one is the pipe inside length. So how far into the pipe it's going to go. I'm going to start off at 25. And then we have the caster nut diameter. So if your caster has a nut on it, what is the diameter of that? And I'm just going to start at 10 and call that good. And then we have the height. I apologize for uh, this flashing on you guys, but that's just the way it's going to be. I'm going to call that 5. And I am basically just copying and pasting these predetermined variable names so I don't have to type them in for you guys. So this is the actual bolt diameter. So um, uh, what did I have that at? 7? Sure, 7. And maybe I will do a screenshot of my drawings with the variables on there so you can see what I am talking about. And then we have the height of the bolt. Start that off at 25. And then we have the actual thickness of the adapter thing. How thick it is on the outside of the pipe. I'm going to call that 5. And then last but not least, I have a vari variable for the tolerance of the 3D printer. I have found that point 0.3 works really good in there, and hopefully I will show you down the road what we're doing with that. Okay, so with my parameters set up, it's time to start sketching. Okay, so let's see. The first thing I'm going to want to do is create a new component. Seems to be kind of best practice. I'm going to call this keyboard stand wheels retrofit version 1. Okay, next thing I... Oh, that's kind of long. Next thing I'm going to want to do is create a sketch along the top plane. And I've added the circle diameter, center diameter circle up to my menu bar. Uh, you can do that, any of these tools, you can actually do that by clicking this little guy here, add a tool, add to toolbar. Pro, pro tip, pro tip. So I need to create a circle. First circle is going to be on my Origin there, and this is going to be pipe outer a diameter, pipe outer diameter plus adapter thickness, plus adapter thickness. Boom. All right, let's see. Need to make my notes a little bigger. You can't see that, but that's okay. I need another circle from that same starting point. 
And this is going to be pipe inner diameter plus tolerance. All right. Let's zoom in a little there. I am also going to need another circle. And this is going to be pipe outer plus tolerance. Okay, so I've got my, basically the bottom of my adapter here. So I've got the outside, I've got the part that we're going to cut out in here, and then I've got the center. So the next thing I need to do is, for later on down the road, I need to create a construction line down one of these uh, origins, and I think we'll do whatever the green one is. So let's do line, and I'm going to turn this into a construction line. And this doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go from here to there and hit escape. So now I have my construction line. Excellent. So now I need to extrude all these circles. So I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to extrude and I am going to do this um, by the pipe inside length plus the caster bolt diameter plus adapter thickness times two. That's quite the thing there. So now I have my cylinder. And let's just double check that. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say edit feature. I'm just going to make sure that all that is correct. And the other thing you can do that I've just realized, you can come up here to your parameters. And yes, you have your variables, but you also have the model parameters. And I can take a look at my last sketch. Uh, excuse me, last extrude. And I can actually look at the expression I used to make sure it's correct. So pipe inside length plus caster bolt diameter plus adapter thickness times two. Okay, that looks right. Check that off my list. So now I need to show my sketch and I need to cut out our inside guy where the pipe's actually going to fit through. So we're going to select that face and we're going to extrude. And this is going to be the pipe inside length. Make sure we're set to cut. And boom. Okay. So now let's go back to our home. We can kind of see what's going on. Take that way that sketch and we can see that yes, indeed, we have cut out the bottom. Now, I would like to see what is actually going on inside there. So um, I am going to create a section analysis. And we can do that with the uh, inspect section analysis. And I'm going to select, um, let's go home. And I'm going to select that guy and go to OK. So now I can see what's going on inside. All right. OK, so we've done that. We've done that. Now what we need to do is we need to get our um, pull for the bolt, which is going to go right through here. And this gets a little tricky, so let me turn off my section analysis and I'm actually going to go to the front yes okay and I need to create a plane along a path actually is there a better way to do this I basically need to draw need to draw on here so what if I hide that and I say create sketch and I select front I think that's going to actually be easier yes 
So I'm going to take this, I'm going to create a line, and I'm going to turn it into a construction line. I'm going to create it from our bottom of where our circles, no, yeah, where the circles started, I believe. And we're going to come up, pipe inside length, plus caster bolt diameter. divided by 2 plus adapter thickness. Does that work? It does work. Does that jive with where our body is? It does! So that's going to give me my height from the bottom of my cylinder up to where I want the uh, bolt, the hole for the bolt to go, I believe is uh, what I'm doing there. Do do. So now I need a circle here for the bolt. So I'm going to grab a circle and I'm going to do it from there. And this is going to be the caster bolt diameter. And you can see I still had my construction line selected. So I'm just going to select that line and turn off construction. That turns it back into a normal line. So now, if we look at this here, yes, that's looking pretty good. Let me turn that off. Okay, and then while I'm here, I'm going to create a polygon from that same spot. And six sides is correct. And this needs to be the caster nut diameter. No, I did find that it doesn't, this is obviously going to be way too big. So I think I did end up dividing this by two. And then actually adding tolerance. So there's some room for that bolt to actually um, slip in. So you'll see this in a little bit. But this is where the bolt going or the nut is going to hold. So I don't have to hold it with a wrench or whatever to screw the caster in place. So let's see if that works. Yep, that looks pretty good. And I don't know how I do this. Oh, I can do it. Oh, uh, no, no, uh, no, don't do that. So that is still construction, so I don't want that construction. I would like to know how to get this aligned to that. And obviously, I don't know how to do that. And that's something maybe I'll figure out later and fix after the fact. But so for now, what we need to do is take our circle and we need to extrude that or cut that to our old body. So um, I should be able to select my body here and see what's going on. Let's rotate around a little bit. Yep, yep, yep. And let's extrude. And this is going to be, I think I ended up doing two sides. And I think I just did all and all, which is kind of helpful. And we make sure we're set to cut and we say, OK, so now we have our hole for the bolt. Sweet. OK, so now we need to make our part for the bolt to slip into so we don't have to hold a wrench to tighten the sucker up. Let's go back to our sketch. Let's turn off our body so we can see what's going on. And we're going to select that. And I don't think we need the inner part, but we'll grab it just in case. And I think I forgot a step. I think I need Yep, I need to create an offset plane first. So Basically, what I want is to start the extrusion out, out here. So I need a plane. I don't know that there's an easier way to do it other than this. So 
we're going to say construct offset plane. And this is going to be pipe outer diameter. Divided by two plus adapter thickness divided by two. And again, if you know of an easier way to do this, okay, so look, perfect. That puts a plane right there. So now I can hide this, select this guy and that guy, and then go to extrude. And um, we're gonna say start from offset plane. And we're gonna do yes. This is going to be bolt, uh, bolt height. But again, that's not doing what I want it to do. Why is that not doing what I want it to do? It's starting from there, not where I want it to start. Um, Let's try that again. You and you. Offset plane. Um, I am confused. No target. Let's say no target body found. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense because that's turned off. Oh, I did this once before. Um, I wanted to start here. Is that what I did? No, I don't think I... Blast best laid blow. That's not what I want. All right. Let's just cancel that. Let's try this one more time. You and you extrude. Start offset plane. No. From object. You're my object. Direction, one side, distance, bolt, height. That looks better. Except it's not bolt height, it is not height. Okay, that's looking better. Turn the body back on. I am confused. So then this just needs. Hey, here we go. That looks right. Let's hide that construction plane. And let's say, okay. All right. That's what we want. All right. So that is basically it now. I think I'm going to want to let's turn back on my section analysis. I think, I don't know if this is going to make a difference or not, but I'm going to take this plane and I'm going to extrude that by like 1.5 and I'm going to put a 45 degree angle on that. So let's do 1.5, not 1.8. And what I'm hoping that does is when I stick the uh, except I want to be negative 45. Uh, no, I had that right. Okay. How about that? And how about that? And that is not what it did last time I did this. What am 
am I doing differently? So basically, I just want the inside to pinch the pipe. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, is that what I did? Again, the best laid plans. Let's try this again. Select. Select you. And I want to extrude. Maybe I went too far. Let's try one. I'm lost. That looks like what I had. Okay. So I did negative one. Yep, okay. So now I have a little pinch. Let's make that 1.5. Okay. So now you can kind of see what's going on there. I just want that to be a little triangle. Again, I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not, but let's at least try. Turn off my section analysis. Okay, so now I think we can do a little bit of embellishing. I will now become the embellisher. So I think to get the tube on easier, I'm going to take this and this, and I'm going to put a chamfer. So. I want to modify, and I want to add chamfer up here, so it's always there. There we go. And I think, I think we just want to do. I don't think there's any variables here that I want to use. Let's just do two. Is that too much? Should we start at two? Should we go to one point five? Let's try one point five. Okay. So now. You can see we have a little bit of just easement there for the pipe to fit into. Excellent. And then I think I am going to want to add a fillet to the front and back of this. So let's say the front here. I'm going to select that and the bottom, that. And we're going to say fillet. And I think this, I'm going to do adapter thickness divided by like two. Let's see if that works. Okay, so now I have a good looking part. So the next thing to try is messing with our variables to see if everything scales correctly because last time they did not. So let's say our let's turn our this let's say our pipe diameter goes like huge. Like we're gonna put this on like a I don't know like a 45. Good. That seems to work. <laughs> but then our inside is wrong, so let's make, let's say it's like a uh, 40. Boom. Let's say we need something really long for something, I don't know, like a big keyboard stand. We're going to take this to like 50. Does it scale with our, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that, it does. That might be a little close there. Something I might want to look at. Um, maybe bring that down, but anyway. Um, what else could we change? Let's say we want it to be stronger at 15. There we go. Oh, that, let's see. There you go. That adds that there. So it seems to be scaling okay. I won't really know until I get some real world, me real world measurements in here. So 
I know that this is now 25.5. And our inner cell, that's interesting. What does that do? Obviously, that's, yep, yeah, that chamfer is going to mess up, but that's okay. Um, and I think I had this at 23.3. Something like that. Yep, that makes more sense. Um, pipe and set length. I'm going to go back to 20. And our adapter thickness. I'm going to go back to, we're going to start with 5. Tolerance is fine. Bolt height is actually 22. And I think everything else the caster nut diameter is actually twelve point seven. So yeah, that changed that. So now we are kind of there. So I think we're going to want to look at that. I might pause and think about that to see if that's something I need to change. But anyway, here we go. I guess the next step would be, so I will just double check all my parameters and kick out an STL and print it and see if it fits. So I should look at that though real quick. Um, What if we took, there's my extrude, let's close this, let's edit this, and what is this? Yep, yep. What if we just added a little bit on here? Maybe we add like adapter thickness times three, maybe? Oh yeah, that might be better. So that gives me a little more room up here, a little more strength. We're gonna leave that there, okay. So let's go, actually, let's save. Yep, user saved. I'm a user. So that should work. Let's take this. Let's kick off a still. And, uh, oops. Oh, you're going to be that. Uh, let's do this. Okay. Okay, let's do this. And let's do... Interesting. Anyway. I will kick that out as a still, 3D print it, and uh, see what happens. I have the latest iteration of the uh Keyboard stand wheel adapter looks like this. See the spot for the nut, spot for the uh, caster wheel, and where it slips onto the keyboard stand. The nut now fits in here. Very nice. 
like so. Then the caster goes through here and it does screw in. It's pretty tight, but then it hits the bolt and stops. So this is all working very nice in a working kind of way. So now there we go. She's tight. Does it fit over the bottom of the keyboard stand? And I'm pretty sure because I may have done this off camera. That guy comes off. This guy goes on. So now the problem I have is this moves around fairly easy. So I may at some point, or I may have to, drill a small hole into this and put in a uh, screw of some sort to keep that there because I've got a feeling when I turn this over it's just going to do this back and forth so uh, we're going to try putting a screw here drill a small little hole see if it holds uh, this video is also getting kind of long so I'm going to separate this into two videos so this is the end of part one part two we'll hopefully we'll finish this up um, so yeah and then uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.